I spent over $800 in heaters and in testing equipment to find out the answer to the question, which of these heaters is best for a tent? Most of these heaters work by burning propane. I found some surprises that I think that you might wanna know about. Most of these heaters are labeled clearly for outdoor use only. I bought many of these because best of blogs recommended them for tents, so I thought I'd do a bunch of testing to find out how good of an idea that really was. There are only two heaters in this lot that are rated for indoor use, and they're both made by Mr. Heater. But are they really the best? Find answers to those questions too. I decided to test these heaters for safety, temperature, and efficiency. I bought an industrial four gas detector that can measure carbon monoxide, oxygen and flammable gases as well as hydrogen sulfide. I used this four gas detector in several tests and I performed many other safety tests as well. I'll give you some of the highlights. In my opinion, the most dangerous part of a heater is the notion that it can set your tent on fire and you are stuck in it. So I did a tip test. TechSport and Martin, which are both, I found the exact same device, have no tip detection, which in my opinion is a deal breaker since they're quite tippy. The Martin CH3 is a catalytic heater and it's actually pretty stable in its tripod formation and it's still possible to tip it over if you try. The other heaters with tip detection did great. At about 30 to 45 degrees, they all turned off except one. The golf cart heater from Mr. Heater is advertised as having a less sensitive tip detector so it doesn't turn off in the golf cart. Mine either was broken or it's just not sensitive enough to use in a tent. As part of my safety test, I did a bunch of gas tests and I go into more detail on these gas tests. You might wanna check out this if you're interested in learning about the safety aspect of using these heaters. I'll make a link to it in the description as well. Anyway, these gas tests showed to me a few surprises. I measured the carbon monoxide output as well as the oxygen levels during lighting and using it in normal circumstances in a fairly big tent, as well as a small tent. The TechSport and Martin both gave off at about 20 parts per million of carbon monoxide when lighting. But when the unit was fully burning in a well-ventilated tent, I couldn't detect any carbon monoxide buildup. As far as carbon monoxide output during normal use, these heaters were the surprise winners. Another surprise was to find the loser. The Little Buddy is one of the few heaters out there that are rated for indoor use, and during lighting it put off 37 parts per million carbon monoxide. Normal operation, the Little Buddy still did the worst 15 parts per million, which is higher than any of the other heaters, actually. To be clear, 37 parts per million is not considered dangerous. I found on the EPA's website that 25 to 50 parts per million is considered acceptable if you're exposed to it for eight hours. Being exposed to 37 parts per million for you know 30 seconds, it's not really a big deal, unless your body is sensitive to that. So the Little Buddy, I don't wanna say it's not usable. It is, but comparatively, it does put out the most carbon monoxide out of these other units. A quick note about this, the fact that these heaters put off any carbon monoxide at all is shows that it's extremely important to make sure that your tent is well ventilated. Don't use any type of heater in a tent that isn't well ventilated, including electric. Make sure that you pull out the guy line, stretch out the tarp, and make sure that any vents are not obstructed or anything like that. All of the other tests did fine in their gas tests, uh, except for one. The Flame King was malfunctioning where not enough gas was going through the tiles, so it was burning in completely. This led to a carbon monoxide buildup in the tent. Whether this was a manufacturing defect or I broke it during one of my other safety tests, I'm not sure. I don't think I'll ever know. This is the only time I got a carbon monoxide reading in a tent during semi-normal operation. I also tested what would happen if I blew out the flames of the heater while it was still running. Every heater stopped the propane when the flames went out. However, the Martin and the Tech Sport take about 40 seconds. When I first did this, I, tried, I waited for like 10 to 15 seconds and they hadn't shut off. Later, I took the heaters outside of the tent and tried again, and at about 40 seconds, these finally cut off. 40 seconds of that propane being leaked into your tent is not a good situation. So again, some strikes against these heaters about their, their blowout detection. I don't know what to call it. To be fair, it's not really likely that the flames are gonna go out from wind inside your tent, but you know, never say never. The Martin CH3 says it has this feature, but I could not blow out the heater no matter what I tried. Overall, only three heaters pass the important safety test. However, only these two are rated and certified for indoor use. 
But even then, in their documentation, they say that they're only to be used in emergency situations. Those are the safety tests. Let's talk about which heater put off the most heat. Temperature is a little bit tricky to test, but I did my best by getting one thermometer and suspending it three feet in front of the front of the heater and another off center from the front, but both at about three feet away. And I decided to do a race. To test the performance of these heaters, what I did was I measured how long it took for the heater to warm up the tent from this temperature to this temperature. On your marks, get set, go. Again, this isn't the best temperature test, but it was the best I could figure out. By the way, have you ever had any ideas of any outdoor stuff that you wish someone would test? Let me know in the comments, that'd be great. The Flame King won this contest, raising the temperature by five degrees Fahrenheit in two minutes and 10 seconds. In 15 minutes, the tent was 68.4 degrees Fahrenheit. The Portable Buddy was right behind at three minutes and 20 seconds, and the temperature was 65.7 degrees by the end of 15 minutes. The Little Buddy actually did the worst at 12 minutes and 12 seconds, and the temperature was 58.1 degrees Fahrenheit by the end of 15 minutes. There it is. The rest crossed the finish line at about the same rate at around seven to eight minutes and 15 minutes was 60 to 61 Fahrenheit. The last test was how efficient these tests were. I just burned these on high for as long as possible and with my newfound knowledge and because I had a gas detector I felt comfortable putting in this in our fireplace and opening up the flue a bit. Winner was the Martin CH3 that lasted about five and a half hours on high and about half an hour on low from those other tests. It probably would last over seven hours on low. Which makes sense. This is a catalytic heater and it's not burning the propane like the rest of these radiant heaters are. The golf cart and little buddy heaters also did well at about five and a quarter hours, give or take 10 minutes, but they don't have a low setting. So five hours is about what you're going to get. Just for clarification on the internet, some people say that the little buddy or portable buddy heaters are catalytic heaters. They are not. They are radiant heaters. They are burning the propane. As you might expect, the Flame King burned the hottest and fastest and lasted about two hours on high. The portable buddy burned on high for about two hours and on low for about 45 minutes. It performed like a champ. I've no doubt you could get three and a half or more hours if you just burn it on low. The Texport and Martin actually did fairly well at about four and a half hours on high and a half an hour on low. It's likely that they would last four and three quarters or perhaps even five hours on low. Overall, I feel like the portable buddy from Mr. Heater is the best in class tent heater at this price range. And the reason why I would choose it over the little buddy is that it is much more stable. I'm not like terrified that it's going to like fall over, but also it puts off more heat because you can turn it on high when you need to. Um, and then you can, it, it, since it's adjustable, you can turn it on low and make the propane bottle last a lot longer. While with the little buddy, it's either on or off and that's it. All the safety features I tested seem to do really well and its gas emissions seemed good. And Mr. Heaters are the only ones that are rated for indoor use, at least in most of the United States. Overall, I would choose the portable buddy for a tent heater if I was to use one. If you wanna see all the test results, including my safety, the temperature and efficiency test, you can Google Decide outside tent heater tests if you wanna see more. The last test I did was in our car, and if you've made it this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to like this video if you did. I was surprised at the results of these tests. I cracked all the windows an inch, including the sunroof. After 15 minutes, both of these heaters showed that there was a buildup of carbon monoxide in the car from about six to eight parts per million. Not dangerous levels at all, but not a good sign the fact that it was building up. I cracked the windows two to three inches and immediately the buildup went away. So I was pretty nervous about doing these tests. It was very hot in the vehicle while I was doing this. And so I think it would make more sense in a larger vehicle. We did it in a small SUV if you had a large SUV or a big van or something like that. But still, I really wouldn't recommend doing this putting a gas heater in a car unless it's an emergency. There's just better ways to keep yourself insulated and warm without relying on something that can, you know, cause carbon monoxide buildup in such a small enclosed space. So there's a lot of risks doing this. So my overall recommendation is to find other ways to heat up and insulate your vehicle. Thanks for watching.